Hey everybody, it's Zach from My Shire Farm and we're back again with another video to help you on your journey with Caternix quail and becoming more self-sufficient. In this video, we are going to talk about maximum effort. That is right, we are here today to try to help you on your journey with Caternix quail and having them be as productive as possible. So we're gonna give you five or six tips, tricks, and best practices on how to get your quail to be as productive as possible for you. Now, I do have a playlist going on in the description. You can check that out and it's called The Best Practices. Uh, and it's a playlist, we've done a feed video, we've done a, I don't know, housing video, and now we're doing this one. And I really wanna hammer home that there are many different ways to raise your quail. And everybody has to find their own way to do it. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's okay. And if you do something differently, please feel free, feel free to share because I think other people can read those comments and maybe they can try it your way and your way might work better for them than what I'm saying. Um, but through the years, I do think that we have found some tips, tricks, and best practices to get maximum production out of our quail. And we're here to share that with you today. So here we go. <clears throat> First and foremost, on average, and everything is different, but on average, a hen will lay about 300 eggs a year. Now, again, that, that changes. So for example, the jumbo wilds are somewhere around 270, 280 eggs a year, where the rosettas that we have are around 320, 330 eggs a year. So major production gap, but our wilds are much larger than the rosettas. So everything's a little bit different, but on average, a hen will lay about 300 eggs a year. It's not that you're trying to go past that. It's that I hear a lot of people not being able to hit that mark. And that's what we're going to talk to about today is some ways to get to that number. And if they have stopped laying, maybe some tips and tricks to get them to start laying. So here we go. First and foremost, lighting. Lighting is very, very important once they start laying. So they need, on average, between 14 and 18 hours a day of light for maximum production. Now, I prefer, and what we actually do here, is 16 hours a day. Uh, it works best for us. Um, some people leave their lights on 24-7. I don't prefer that. I would rather have them have a little bit of a break uh, and not always be up and alert. Um, but it works for some people and some people just don't want to have to deal with going out and turning the lights off and on and this, that, and the other. And that's okay too. Now we have timers that we've set up in our barn. So they come on at a certain time, they go off at a certain time and that works best. And to me, that would be what I would recommend is put some timers in there, set it for 16 hours, and that will get you on the road for maximum production. Um, now, if you don't give them supplemental light, that's okay. They're not going to be as productive, especially when it gets colder because the sun's not out as much. But the upside to that is they will actually lay longer for you. So if you give them 16 hours of light a day, on average, and everything is different, but on average, uh, they'll be productive for around two years, right? If you don't give them supplemental light, they usually tend to go for about two years and three months to two years and six months. So they will lay longer for you, but there's going to be months and every year that they're not producing anything for you. And lighting could be the issue. Number two, square feet. Now we've hammered this in a couple different videos, but the square feet per quail really does matter for maximum production. If they are way too cramped in there, and if you're putting way too many quail in a small space, they're not gonna be as productive for you. But the opposite is true as well. If you give them too much space, they are not going to be as productive for you. At least that is what we have seen and researched. So we recommend three quail per square foot in our cages. Now I have talked to a couple people that have aviaries and they do anywhere from two to four quail per square foot and they say that works fine for them. And that's okay, everybody is different. But in our circumstance, in our opinion, three quail per square foot will give you maximum production, maximum quail in that area and uh, still happy and healthy quail and enough to move around. So we recommend three quail per square foot. 
Now, the next one is the male to female ratio. Believe it or not, this is a huge issue with maximum production. So if you have one male to every two hens, those hens are going to be overbred and overbred. They're going to be stressed out and they will not be as productive for you. Now, if you do one male to every 10 hens, they will probably be very productive for you, but your fertility is going to be not very good. So what we recommend in this situation is five hens to every one male. In this instance, you're going to have very high fertility rate and maximum production in our, in, in our opinion, in our view. Um, now you can do four quail, you can do three quail per, or three hens per male, or four hens per male. You can do that. Uh, if you go lower than the five, the hens will be beat up a little bit. You'll start seeing the, the back feathers uh, starting to miss. And if the hens get irritated with it, you'll start seeing the males have puffy eyes. And that's because the hens are telling them you're done. Uh, the male's not going to listen. The hen's going to keep beating her up or beating him up. Uh, and you could have some aggression territorial issues. You might not. Some people don't have that issue at all. That's something that you can look at and decide if that works for you or not. Um, <clears throat> number four, out of the elements. So if they are outside, uh, you just need to make sure that they are out of the elements or they can get out of the elements. Heavy wind, snow, rain, sleet, whatever is going to fall from the sky next, who knows, uh, but they need to be able to get out of the elements. Now, a lot of people worry about either the extreme heat or the extreme cold. That does not affect the quail. They are very hardy and they really don't mind that much. Um, so they handle that just fine. We have shipped a lot of quail to Texas and we've shipped a lot of quail to Florida and we've shipped a lot of quail to Alaska and everywhere in between. Um, and, uh, and they do just fine inside or outside insulated or uninsulated. Um, it doesn't really matter. So the weather doesn't, no, the temperature doesn't affect them very much. The weather can a little bit. So they might, you know, if it's a really bad storm, you know, they might get a little scared and stop laying for a day or two, but as long as they can get out of the elements, that is the best practice for maximum production. Number one, two, three, four, five, is try to eliminate as much change as possible. Now, they are very adaptable when it comes to temperature, but they do not like change. So if you change their lighting from zero to 16 hours a day, uh, if you change their feed, if you change cages, if you switch new males or new hens in, or whatever the case may be, if you change anything about their environment, they're gonna get pooty. And when they do that, they will stop laying for a few weeks. Maybe a little less, maybe a little bit more, but typically it's about a two week wait. They make you wait two more weeks before they'll start producing eggs for you again. That's okay, it's not a big deal, uh, but that's something that you can look at. So you, try, you want to try to eliminate as much change as possible. So for example, let's say you're wanting to change the feed. You're using a starter grower, you're wanting to change them to a layer feed, I would transition them. I would do half and half for a week and then put them on the layer. They won't stop laying um, and they'll keep going. But if you change the feed immediately, there is that possibility that they'll stop. They might not. Again, there's many different ways to raise quail and a lot of people have success in a lot of different ways. We're just trying to share our experiences. Uh, so try to eliminate as much change as possible. Last but not least is safe and sound. It is very important for the quail to feel safe. If they do not feel safe, if the hens don't feel safe, they will not produce those eggs for you because they don't feel like the egg is safe. So if you've had any predators around, they're going to stop laying for a couple weeks. It's okay. They're, they just got to reset, right? Um, and we'll give you some ideas on how to reset in just a second, so stay tuned. <clears throat> um, but you want to try to eliminate as much predator problems as possible. Now, can you eliminate all predator issues? No, you cannot. So you can put a uh, quarter inch wire on the sides. That would help a lot. Um, and you can try to cover, you know, three fourths of the cage. 
and whatever the case may be. Ideally, you put it inside. That works really well, but a lot of people do aviaries and they do okay. Uh, but predators or the possibility of being attacked will prevent them from being maximum production for you. So you wanna keep that in mind as well. Now, there's a couple tips and tricks that I do wanna share with you at the end of this video. Uh, number one, um, if they do stop laying, uh, because of a change in feed or a change in lighting or a really bad storm or a predator attack, or whatever the case may be. Kind of need to wait them out. You can give them some electrolytes in the water and some rooster booster in their feed. You can get both of those on Amazon or tractor supply or anything like that. That does tend to help a little bit, but try your very best not to go overboard and try your very best to just leave everything the way it is. They'll start laying again, but the more changes you make, the longer the process could be. So keep that in mind. Um, also, if you have transitioned them from a feed, from a starter grower to a layer feed, and you're starting to have massive issues with not producing or soft eggs or whatever the case may be, or prolapse, you definitely wanna check your feed. You wanna make sure that it's a good bag of feed, it's not been sitting around for a long time, it's not expired, and you need to make sure that the ingredients are good. Um, and that's another big issue I definitely see from uh, new people starting out. And we're just trying to help you be as successful as possible. So, I hope that, that helps. Those are our best practices that we practice here at My Shire Farm, and hopefully that will work for you as well. If you do something completely different, feel free to share, comment below, let other people read it, and maybe they can try your way as well. So, best of luck, and as always, thank you very, very much for watching this video. Make sure you support the channel by just hitting the like button and subscribe, and remember, every Sunday and Monday we go live right here on our YouTube channel, My Shire Farm, for a Q&A. So if you have questions about your Caternix quail, you're more than welcome to join us, ask your questions, and we will do our very best to help you on your journey with Caternix quail. Until next time, everybody, stay safe.